If you fly to the tiny province of Prince Edward Island on Canada's eastern coast, then drive about an hour east out of the capital city, you'll finally come to a small unmarked building guarded by a chain link fence. There's nothing special about it outside, but inside is another story. These tanks contain the only genetically engineered animal in the world that's been deemed safe to eat. What's the status of GMO fish and what are your concerns around this? There was just a declaration recently by the courts that the approval process for the salmon that was approved by the FDA was illegal. I'm needing to check to see if the court order blocks the release. Long touted as safe by Aquabounty, the company that has been swimming upstream seeking regulatory approval for about 20 years. The risk is as minimum as you could ever expect to get with any product. Now the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. agrees, ruling there is no meaningful differences between the engineered salmon and its conventional counterpart. We found where the alligator catfish hybrids are being spawned. Stay tuned and we will tell you where. Hey everyone, it's Jordan here again. Welcome back to Science Maniatics. We did a video that you can check out, which spoke about scientists using the genes from an alligator that they mixed with a catfish using CRISPR technology. We called this beast the Catagator. Let's rehearse before we reveal where this lab is. Using this gene editing technology and just a pinch of alligator DNA, scientists have created a sterile hybrid species of catfish they say is more resistant to infection. As we all know, catfish is a staple in American cuisine. But did you know that in 2021, the U.S. imported 256 million pounds of catfish and commercially produced another 307 million pounds. However, the problem with raising catfish in farm ponds is that they become breeding grounds for diseases, leading to farmers losing a large number of fish every year to various infections. Most of these farm-raised fish originate in the South, primarily in Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Texas, where the hush puppy a deep-fried treat that is the true love of the region was created. Where is the lab that created these hybrid fish? I'll give you a hint. It begins with an A. Enter the scientists at a certain university who are on a mission to create a more resilient catfish. Stay tuned until the end and we will reveal where, because it might be right in your hometown or somewhere you know. Using CRISPR technology, they inserted a unique protein found in alligators called cathlecidin into catfish genes. This antimicrobial protein is thought to protect alligators from developing infections in their wounds. And the scientists believe that by inserting it into catfish, they can create a more resilient fish. To prevent any risk of these genetically modified fish escaping and disrupting neighboring ecosystems, the scientists removed a catfish gene associated with reproduction and replaced it with the alligator gene. This swap made the hybrid catfish unable to reproduce, but follow-up experiments proved that their survival rates were between two and five-fold higher. While they haven't been peer-reviewed yet, their findings have since been published in BioRxiv. Now, let's take a moment to think about the potential of this technology. What if we were to create a superfish that grows twice as fast as its relatives in the wild and on fish farms, costs less to raise, is easier to keep, and is more profitable? Isn't this a story we have heard before? No harm, no foul, right? Already a reality. A biotechnology company called Aqua Bounty Farms of New Brunswick, Canada, created a transgenic, biogenetically engineered salmon that grows up to six times faster and is double the size of a normal Atlantic salmon. The new species is made when scientists introduce the DNA of Chinook salmon into Atlantic salmon, increasing growth hormones year-round as opposed to creating a hybrid species, which results when naturally occurring species mate. Another gene from ocean trout aids the growth hormones in causing fish to grow more quickly. This scenario was the stuff of science fiction 30 to 40 years ago. Scientists warned us about it 10 years ago, saying it was just around the corner. The time has come. 
These superfish can be commercialized in 18 months, which is almost half the time it takes for regular farm salmon to do so. But with this potential dream come true for investors, come the concerns of conservationists and environmentalists. There's a lack of government regulation of biogenetically engineered food and the expectation that transgenic fishes will dominate the environments where they are introduced, leading to an ecosystem imbalance and the disappearance of species. Dr. Jane Rissler, a senior staff scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists and a steadfast critic of biotech regulation, stated in a New York Times article that the FDA is not qualified to evaluate the ecological risks of engineered fish. We require a mechanism that enables us to check information in advance and places the burden of evidence on those who would present it. The Department of the Interior's science advisor, Dr. William Brown, concurred, adding, I don't think the potential impacts on nature have been thought through as well as they should be. Aqua Bounty Farms of Aqua Bounty Technologies got their salmon approved by the FDA back in 2015. To what extent is the fish on dinner plates? We are not sure, since they currently do not have to be labeled. If you know, let us and others know in the comments section. Regulatory approval for these hybrid catfish isn't a given because of the moral dilemmas raised by CRISPR technology and genetic alteration. The wider scientific community has already expressed skepticism about the experiment. Even if these hybrid fish are more resistant, others have suggested most fish producers don't need sterile, lab-spawned fish. In addition, offering hybridized alligator catfish to consumers presents a business issue, even if the hybrid species is still just a catfish. Dunham noted that it's unlikely anyone would recognize a difference in the meat itself, and Sue agreed with Dunham that people would gradually come around to the idea. I would definitely eat that, he declared. Has he consumed it already though and does he eat it on a regular basis? That is the question. I don't think the issue is if people would be able to tell the difference. I think the issue is people not knowing how it was brought into life. Let us know down below in the comments section if we are wrong on this assessment. So where is the lab that is producing these monstrous catfish? Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama. Before you go, let me leave you with some thought-provoking questions. What are the ethical considerations of creating genetically engineered animals for consumption we should consider? Should there be more regulation on the creation and sale of genetically modified foods? How does the introduction of genetically modified species impact the ecosystem and other species? Who should bear the burden of proof in regards to the safety and impact of genetically engineered food and animals? What will be the long-term consequences of creating and consuming genetically modified species? Should animals that have had their DNA modified be clearly labeled in stores for consumers with what type of technology was used to do so? How would you react if you went to a restaurant and later found out that you were served the famous Katagator? Thanks for watching Science Maniatics. We hope this video was both informative and thought-provoking. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Until next time.